Bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We are from Group A, and then we are going to explain about quasi experiment, uh, quasi experimental design. And then our group consists of uh, me. My name is Yuda Kristianto, and then uh, the other member is Pak Ahmad Setiadi, Miss Nova Kartika Sari, Miss Beauty Soleha Rafi, and the last is uh, uh, Mr. Faiz Muhammad Bila. And then the first slide, uh, I'm going to explain about. What is the quasi-experimental? Okay, so quasi-experimental research is the research that resembles experimental research, but is not true experimental research by itself. Although the dependent variable is manipulated, and then the participants are not randomly assigned the conditions of orders of condition, stated by Cook and Campbell, 1979. And then uh, the other uh, explanation about uh, quasi-experimental design. The quasi-experimental design, just like a true experiment, aims to identify the cause and effect relationship between two variables, the independent and dependent variable. The only difference is that the quasi-experimental design employs non-random criteria while assigning subject to groups. Was so, was so, uh, no date. Next slide. Okay, so uh, in this slide, uh, this is the type of quasi-experimental research. That one is the consist of regression discontinuity, natural experiments, and non-equivalent group designs. So uh, three of them are uh, related to each other. And then next slide, uh, Mr. Faiz will explain. Um, okay, now I'm going to experiment. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm going to explain the branches of the quasi experimental uh, research type. Uh, first, first branch is regression discontinuity. The regression discontinuity approach involves measuring the impact of the treatment or independent variable by applying a treatment assignment mechanism that is based on a continuous eligibility index that is variable with a continuous distribution. Subjects are therefore selected to be a part of the treatment group based on whether their value on a uh, predetermined numeric rating scale exceeded a, uh, a, des a designated threshold. Those who fall below that threshold do not receive the treatment and will hence be part of the control group instead. Um, and then the second branch, the next slide, is the non-equivalent group design. In the non-equivalent -equ group design, researchers select two groups. One is exposed to the treatment, while the other is not. This is not considered a random assignment as the researcher is working with pre-existing group and not allocating the subject to either group based on random assignment. Although researchers aim to select the true groups that are similar as possible, we cannot we cannot be never sure that the group are actually comparable. It is highly unlikely that the two groups would be as comparable as they would have been if they were created using random assignment. This design was named as the non-equivalent group design for this very reason. And it's unlikely that the two groups are not equivalent. Uh, the... The next slide will be explained by the next slide will be explained by Pak Ahmad. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pak Faiz. Uh, the last branch of the quasi-experimental research types is the natural experiments. Uh, in both laboratory and field experiments, research, uh, researchers generally determine how subjects are designed to groups, whether that be through random or non-random criteria. However, in natural experiments, a naturally occurring external event or situation results in the random assignment of subjects to different groups. Therefore, the factors that influence assignment are out of the control of investigators. Although many natural experiments employ a method that resembles random assignment, they are still not considered to be true experiments because they utilize the observational method. Some situations in which natural experiments are appropriate and commonly used include policy changes, weather events, and natural disasters. 
Okay, um, now I am going to um, present the quasi experimental research forms. There are uh, there are three forms. The first one is pre uh, experimental designs. Okay, so um, it consists of the one group pre test post test design, the one group post test only design, and the non equivalent post test design. The second one is pre test post test non equivalent group design. So this is the illustration when we have two groups, okay, and then uh, the experimental group they will get the treat uh, the pre test. Both group both groups will get the pre test, but then in the experimental group they will have uh, or they will get uh, distraction, which is the treatment, and both group will have the post test. But then in the control group the difference is that they will not get the treatment, and the last one is one group time series. So the experimental group they will actually have the uh, the the treatment uh, in the middle of um in the middle of the in the middle of the research okay and the next part of the presentation will be delivered by miss nova okay so i want to uh, show you the example of course experimental design study and here we have two examples the first article is Okay, it's about the application of small WhatsApp groups and the individual flip instruction model to boost EF learners mastery of collocation by uh, Yudi Arifani. Uh, this current research investigated the effect of small WhatsApp group and individual flip instructional design to promote EF learners collocation mastery and their attitude towards the two different combinations. And then the second article is about flip learning design in EFL classrooms, implementing self-regulated learning strategies to develop language skills. So this uh, study examined the development of students' language skills in a flip English foreign language course design with self-regulated learning strategies and, and then also uh, we we found uh, the similarities between the uh, two studies and then it will be explained by uh, beauty all right so here i'm going to explain about the similarity of two the of the quasi experimental articles and the first similarity is both of the studies using quasi-experimental study. It is in the form of pre-test, post-test, non-equivalent group uh, design. As it could be seen in this uh, slide, the both of the studies using uh, the pre- and post-test uh, non-equivalent group design. And the second similarity is, next slide. Yep, the second similarity is the participants randomly classified into experimental and control groups. In the first study, experimental, the experimental group are the small subgroup with small groups collocation activities via the flip instructional method model and the control group are the individual whatsapp with individual collocation activities via the flip instructional model mm -hmm. and in the studies uh, the second study the experimental group are the group that receive the course through flip classroom model designed with self-regulated learning strategies and while the control group receive the course through flip uh, classroom model designed without the self-regulated learning strategies. And the next similarity is uh, the hypothesis test employing a t-test model, as it could be seen in the slide. The first study is employing a t-test model for the hypothesis test and as well as for the second study, it is also using the t-test. Okay, and the last slide is... Oh, right. So uh, that's all from our group. Thank you so much for your attention and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.